new report spotlights once again Big Pharma's egregious scamming of sick Americans in reaction to the recent launch of a new program letting Medicare negotiate lower prices for a handful of medicines. Drug makers are balking, saying that the initiative will limit patients' access to medicine and stymie the development of new cures. But as Andrew Perez and Matthew Cunningham Cook point out, all 10 of the drugs up for negotiation are already being sold in other countries at fractions of what pharmaceutical companies are charging for them here in the United States. And drug makers are reporting huge revenues from those foreign sales. Democratic presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. retweeted the report, highlighting this fact. In some cases, Americans are being charged 1,000 percent more than foreign pa uh, patients for the same drugs. Yeah, this this has been a fight that's been going on for a lot of years. People, I'm sure most older people remember, but for the benefit of those of us who weren't necessarily clued into what was going on in Medicare, uh, you know, a decade plus ago, we had a Medicare system that did not include the price of pres prescription drugs into 2006. That's an incredible thing to really consider, that there was an understanding that there needed to be a public health care program that ended up being one of the most public, uh, popular public programs in the history of the American government, but that but which excluded because of the push from the pharmaceutical industry and lobbyists, which, by the way, there's about three lobbyists for every co congressperson. Um, to exclude the right of the government to be able to, uh, sorry, to exclude the inclusion of prescription drug prices. So you go to the doctor and the doctor's health care, the advice to you might, might be covered. If you have to go in and have a surgery, that'll be covered. But if they send you home saying you've got to take these pills to stay alive, that in fact was not included as part of your coverage. Now in 2006, there was a hot political debate about how to resolve this issue. Uh, George Bush wanted uh, a kind of a privatized version of a solution as opposed to just including the drugs as a part of Medicare. Eventually, we got um, med med prescription coverage as part of Medicare, but the, the Faustian bargain was this, that unlike every other government in the world, similarly situated government in the world, which allows the government with its power as the number one provider of these prescription medications to negotiate drug prices on the behalf of patients, of citizens, our government would not be allowed to do that. And we've been dealing with that Faustian bargain all this time because ultimately it has resulted in the prices of drugs soaring here in the United States, unlike all these other similarly situated countries. And it seems like RFK Jr. very savvily, the same way that Donald Trump actually was criticizing this as he was running in 2016, realizes this is a, an opportunity to really distinguish himself among a field. Yeah, I read this article in Jacobin, which is a socialist publication. I didn't expect to like it very much, but there's actually plenty in it I agree with, including calling out things that um, libertarians have complained about a lot. Um, so if the drugs are a thousand percent cheaper in other countries, let's just import them. Just buy them, just ha ship them. Amazon can deliver them. Um, but in fact, you can't because that's illegal. Right. That's an FDA issue. That's one thing. The other thing is these, um, the abuse, the insane abuse of the patent system that'll, so that there's not generic, uh, uh, competitors for the, like they're not they're not exposed to actual free market pressures because they have all these ways to prevent um, uh, uh, generics from competing with them. The the patent system is ridiculous um, to begin with. So I, I was glad to see all that called out here. Yeah, today. and specific specifically again, this is an issue of lobbyists buying control of agencies, not you know the FDA waking up. It itself just trying to be bad actors. There's specifically a nonprofit called Partnership for Safe Medicines that emerged a few years ago as a leading voice against the kind of Senate bills that would have allowed drugs to be imported from uh, Canada yeah. specifically. This really is a, um, a lobbyist issue. It's why many of us were pointing out that Joe Biden was unlikely to be the one that brought real reform in this area, given that he took more money from the pharmaceutical industry than anybody else in the 2020 race. Now, some people will say, well, you were wrong. He's obviously, um, he ran on uh, allowing the government to negotiate prescription drug prices. That has now gone into effect. But let's look at the fine print. This goes into effect in 2026. It only involves this small roster of 10 drugs. Some of those 10 drugs, as the um, 
article points out, the, the Jacobin mm -hmm. article points out, are going to be excluded for other reasons relating to uh, generics coming on the market and et cetera, and are just kind of performatively in the roster of 10 drugs. Um, and it seems obvious that the, the, the original plan was deeply diluted by further lobbying from the industry. Also, these drugs weren't chosen because they are the, the ones that people need the most or are the most life-saving or where costs have run away. The, the, it's not has not been tailored in any way for the maximum benefit of the American public. It has to do with these kind of business negotiations with these drug retailers. Moreover, it's really important to point out, not only are they making hand, a profit hand over fist overseas on the very drugs that Americans are having to pay exorbitant fees for. And that but, our tax dollars subsidize their research but that, for. Yeah, that was going to be my <laughs> point, that the, that the claims that the pharmaceutical companies are making, that but for their ability to profit, they would not be able to manufacture these drugs or come up with these drugs in the first place, is really undermined by the extensive government invested, investment of our tax dollars into the research and development in the first instance. Yeah, I, I don't really disagree. I mean, I would, <laughs> I would probably call into question a lot of that funding anyway. Um, you know, if they're going to reap the profits from the drugs they design, then they can pay for the uh, for for assembling them in the lab or whatever it is. And uh, and I, again, I would really like to just do. They're selling them like it's a, we should have a glo global economy. Sorry, you're selling them cheaply in Vietnam or Malaysia or whatever. I, we can uh, we can uh, we can have somebody. Uh, you know, put those in a put them in a box and uh, arrive in U.S. shores. It would be that would be great to me. Yeah, I mean, last year Bernie Sanders made an effort. I'll, dri I'll do it. I'll drive down to Mexico. I'll stockpile them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, so Bernie Sanders historically has done these best trips. Vermont being so close to Canada to bring public attention to this issue, taking a bunch of uh, usually people with diabetes to Canada to buy insulin, which has ten times historically been 10 times more costly in the United States than it is just a few miles north of where Bernie resides in Vermont, to demonstrate how ridiculous um, American policy is. Uh, he tried to use um, must-pass legislation last year to get an amendment in that would allow importation from Canada. He's been making these kind of efforts throughout. Yeah, that'd and be I, great. And I really do wish that, that we, we talk so much about some of these culture issues and some of these issues with pi partisan bickering. I do wish the progressives on, on Congress would spend more time drawing attention to why it is that even some Democrats oppose this kind of legislation um, and why it's taken this long for Joe Biden, despite this being one of his core campaign promises, to even go this far, and why it is that we're still talking about a limited roster of 10 drugs and not simply flinging the doors open. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't call seem out like your it's going to be a huge improvement looking at it, frankly. I mean, there, it's being heralded as this incredible yeah. achievement that justifies everybody coming out to vote for Joe Biden again. But I, my personal subjective perspective is that the role of the progressive wing of the Democratic Party should be pointing out the corruption within the flank of its own party uh, and, and pointing out the fact that even when you have a trifecta, as Joe Biden did for the first two years of his administration, you're still not getting a fulfillment of these basic campaign promises, which are also widely popular with the American people more broadly. If he is going to do this minimum effort, if you put in this minimum effort, your job should be pushing him increasingly to the left, not giving him a parade for doing the bare minimum. Mm. Well, we will continue following that, although nice of uh, RFK Jr. to call it out, you know, call attention to this. Maybe that'll help win back the uh, affection of some of uh, the, the progressive base that you think has turned on him a little bit, giving some of his statements. Look, I certainly think it's good for him and people like Marianne and Cornell West who are in the race to keep highlighting these kind of issues that, that may or may not have the effect of pushing Joe Biden. But if they don't have any real viable chance to winning, they're not going to put that much pressure on him. And as you can see from some of Joe Biden's defenders, even that we've talked to today on the show, there is a, a choice to just emphasize how happy we should be for the crumbs that we've gotten, uh, as opposed to doing any kind of real pushing or threat to withhold one's vote in a way that might actually have a real effect. So. I don't think it's going to turn the left back on to <laughs> RFK Jr. The Israel stuff, I think, was pretty much the death knell for him on the left. But the voice in the mix in the room is certainly appreciated. Mm. Well, we'll have more rising right after this.